Well, look, hi everybody, Tony Harrington here from Tradies Money Mentoring and Your Property Investing. Tonight, I'm absolutely excited, I'm super, super pumped that uh, we've got the co-founder of Reebok, Mr. Joe Foster, with us here for a live interview. So, um, Joe's over in the UK at the moment, and uh, let's wake, let's say hello and say, hi Joe, welcome aboard. How are you, Joe? I'm doing fine, Tony. Thank you very much for inviting me and having this conversation. I'm really looking forward to it. Absolutely. Look, um, mate, I was blessed enough to meet you a few weeks ago when you're in Australia and you're up at Brisbane at a JT Fox event. And the life story of Reebok and how you and your brother Jeff, back from about, I think, 1958, late 50s, you, you started the company. Um, right. It was a bit of an offshoot from your grandfather, Joseph, who had a had his own running shoe business, you know, back in the late 1800s, early 1900s, and was actually very successful at... Um, Spiked runners and a lot of athletes went on to win Olympic gold medals. So you have got a long tradition with the uh, with the shoe industry. We really had a good start. Yes, uh, my grandfather was quite a genius. He was he, he invented the spike running shoe, and as you say, he got a lot of world records and a lot of gold medals in his uh, uh, in his shoes. Even the, the the athletes that in Chariots of Fire. I don't know if you know Chariots of Fire, the film. Um, yeah, yeah. Was Eric Little. Um, Lord Burley and uh, Harold, Harold Abrams, they all won their gold medals in, uh, in, in the 1920s. And, uh, and so when they made the film, those athletes who they sort of, uh, well, they immortalised those athletes, but they actually won their, uh, won their gold medals in uh, my grandfather's shoes. Absolutely. Well, that's a great bit of history there, yeah. So when it came to you and your brother Jeff working through the business and then going down the path with Reebok back in the, uh, the late 50s into the 60s and 70s, a lot of my clients, Joe, that I work with in Australia are construction worker, tradie, working families, and they right. spend a lot of long long hours working. They're away on weekends and they work late at, you know, day and night, Not don't spend a lot of time with family and kids and the wife and all that. So... For you, mate, what was it like as you were moving through trying to build the business and build the brand? And, you know, of course, you've got to work hard to build that sort of company. And, you know, um, a lot of people may or may not know it was sold out to Adidas in 2005 for $3.8 billion. So that's an absolutely fantastic achievement. But go back to the early days, if you could, and when you're going out to build, there's a lot of pressure and stress. How did you handle that from a family perspective? You know, a lot of time away and a lot of working hours. How did you, how did you sort of work your way through that? Well, you know, I have been asked about stress before, and uh, you go back to 1958, we didn't know the word. Mm. Nobody knew what stress was. <clears throat> you know, stress is a, is a modern-day sort of infliction you've got because you, you, you're under some sort of pressure. But we didn't, we didn't have uh, the word stress. And, and I guess the life was a bit different in those days because we didn't have computers, we didn't have cell phones. Uh, mm. In fact, e even the sort of your normal phone which you had was you couldn't really phone abroad you, you had to book a call so yeah to to get anywhere <clears throat> anywhere outside of the uk i had to take a flight i had to fly somewhere so the pace was probably a little less hectic um and mm -hmm. apparently life was probably quite a lot easier in those early days but uh you know, we set up the company, J.W. Foster's. They, they did export, but they only exported to the Commonwealth in those days. Well, in his day, <laughs> the empire. <laughs> but it, it was, it was the, the Commonwealth. And uh, then they, they did actually get into USA. But I think USA came to, came to him because he was so renowned for his, uh, his shoes that Yale, Yale University, they came to uh, uh, my grandfather. Well, they, they, actually, my grandfather died then, but they came to Foster's. So they did mm. that business, but you know, Reebok went global, and global meant everything. Re, uh, Fosters they were hardly into Europe because, again, English-speaking language, English-speaking countries, mm -hmm. fine. Beyond that, difficult. So eventually, I mean, it probably happened to you. You keep pushing on the company, the company keeps growing, and you keep taking that next step, that next step. So instead of us being a local North of England business. We became sort of number one in the UK for running. And then mm -hmm. it's a question, what do we do? Do we expand territory or do we expand our offering? Do we go into other products? Uh, and we decided that territory was better because Adidas owned the football market. They, they just owned it. That would be too expensive. So then I start traveling. So I'm, I'm away from home more. 
I'm from mm. I went to America yeah. in 1968. I, I started going to America to the NSGA show, and uh, 68. It was 1979 before I actually got a distributor, a good distributor. I had six failed attempts, but mm. as, mm. as far as family life was concerned, Yes, I was away. In fact, uh, the NSGA show was always on my son's birthday, so ah. I was I was never home. Yeah, yeah. Big disadvantage, and he couldn't phone. Even in those days, I couldn't phone for him. It wasn't available. Mm. Uh, but they one, one advantage I could uh, give him was I could bring him a toy back from America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so sort of, yeah, I guess that was compensation. But yeah, there's a big big pressure on, on family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see it all the time, especially um, in today's day and age where we've got, you know, high inflation, high interest rates and a whole lot of things happening in the world today and world economies are all over the place and stuff like that. I think the pressure is on families out there. One of the things that I found with um, people trying to build a life and, and build a future, how do you sort of keep that balance too between you're working and you've obviously got a passion to create something for family or a legacy how do you sort of keep that balance too so that you keep that happy medium? Well, I think it's very difficult. And uh, I don't know whether I was uh, good at it or not good at it, but uh, <laughs> I, think, I think it's the same with you. If, if, a, if a problem turns up at, with the business, you have to go, you have to answer it. You can't just mm. say, oh, it's all right, I'll give me 48 hours and I'll get around to it. No, it's, it's five minutes. You've, you've got to answer those things. Whereas mm. in a family... Uh, unless it's health or something like that, uh, some accident, you can usually put things off a little while. And mm -hmm. so that's very testing. And uh, my, my first wife, she didn't like to travel because that mm -hmm. would have been compensation. Had she uh, been willing to travel, that would have been good. And she did travel. I don't know if you read my book, but if you, if you get into my book, she did towards the uh, yeah. when successful. She did travel, and, and unfortunately that did cause as many problems as not traveling <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> because, uh, because she didn't understand all all the things you go through and so many things you've got to ignore and when you're traveling <clears throat> you're offered all sorts of uh, entertainment should we say and mm -hmm. you know, you've, you've got to get on with the work but uh, certainly when you move into uh, asia and, and the east bribes are, are there for you you know they Somebody wants to give you a nice present, a nice this, look after you just to get the business. So yeah. you've got to be very, very careful to sort of thank you, but no thank you, and get on with the business. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> I mean, with Reebok becoming global, <clears throat> and I was in America such a lot, because that's where really that's where the, the brand took off. <clears throat> when, <clears throat> excuse me. When we got into uh, aerobics, I mean, we went from nine million to nine hundred million in four years. <clears throat> was that was that when Jane Fonda was wearing the shoes? When Jane Fonda had the aerobic uh, videos all over the place. That's right. That was right. that was that was a big influence to the growth of the business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, if I ever went in America, I was somewhere else around the world, Japan or whatever, putting on distribution. So mm -hmm. as we became global. <clears throat> And say towards, towards the end, my wife did travel. <laughs> my son actually joined into came into the business. Mm. And I'm not sure that was a good thing because, you know, you you, you sort of have the business running nice, and when somebody says, uh, "No, I'm not doing that," if it's your son, it's difficult. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so, um, so, so, what would you have any advice for mum and dad working families? trying to build their life together, but also trying to create wealth. Is there any sort of principles or any sort of tips you could give people on how to try to manage their money and do well with money? Well, I, th I think if you're working hard, the money almost looks after itself because you, <clears throat> you're not just spending it. But, yes, I mean, do some financial planning. There are a lot of, <clears throat> a lot of good people, a lot of good accountants, a lot of people who can help you in that direction because <clears throat> usually if you're working at a business, You've got whatever you've got to do in that business. That's paramount. And and the money, you, you need people to look after money. You need people to look after legal. And if you've got that, it's okay. But I think with a family, it's if you can work together, <clears throat> try to include the family. Right now, if anybody wants me to go anywhere, I need two tickets. 
Julie has to come as well. I don't go mm -hmm. anywhere now without Julie. And so yeah. Julie may think she never does anything else but travel with me, but at least we have fun doing it, and she makes more friends than I do. So that's if you can work <laughs> together as much as possible, just try it. Uh, and that way you can have a, fam <clears throat> have a family as, as well as a business. Absolutely. And probably a, a last question may be, how do you define success? Uh, being happy. If you're having, being <clears> happy if you're with having who you are and where you are and what you're doing. Yeah, if you're having a family and you're happy to be whatever place you are and wherever you go, if you're happy, that's success. To me, that's success. It's not necessarily an awful lot of money because an awful lot of money can give you an awful lot of problems. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I totally concur with that because I got myself out of the building industry. I used to be a tradie and I got myself to a point where I run my business. I'm coaching tradies. I'm coaching workers. And to me, it's fun. It's enjoyment. I don't feel like I work. I haven't worked for 20 years. That's and right. I've got that bit of freedom for health and fitness and the things I like to do. So I love the analogy of it, Joe. And, um, I really, really thank you for your insight tonight. It's been a pleasure to have the opportunity to talk to you. I'm highly blessed. I'm sure that my clients and the people that get to hear this interview will be absolutely stoked. Congratulations on an absolutely fantastic career and life and the build of the Reebok. And I was an Adidas kid when I was young. I had to go and mow lawns and do paper rounds to buy myself a pair of Adidas boots or an Adidas shirt. Um, okay. Adidas was the big when I was in the 70s, so... Mate, I really, really appreciate tonight, and I thank you so much for being a part of this, and I wish you all the joy and happiness and success as life goes forward. Well, it's a pleasure, Tony, and uh, all the best with your life. And, yes, I can see you having fun, and that's it. it. When people ask me what's the most important thing about running a business, I say it's to have fun. If you're not having fun, it's going to be tough. It's going to be difficult. Don't not every day is fun. Not every day is fun, but, you know, in general, you just got to do that and just enjoy it. So yeah, enjoy, enjoy your life and continue doing what you're doing. And, uh, yeah, have fun. Thanks so much. And good luck in the ashes next time we play you, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks That's so okay. much. I appreciate it. Thank Cheers. you.